All right, I got another smart telescope for my collection. This time I got my hands on a ZWO Seastar S30. And I've mentioned in previous videos how I have a traditional astrophotography rig, but it's at Starfront Observatories, which is a remote site in the middle of Texas. And although I really enjoy having access to dark skies, I also miss being able to set up my own equipment out in the backyard for a night of stargazing and astrophotography. And this is where a smart telescope like this one will come in to scratch the itch. And I wanna see what's in the box, so we'll do a real quick unboxing and then we'll talk specifications. All right, let's check it out. Very nice packaging. ZWO has always packaged their products very well. And we have stickers, which I honestly will just end up giving to my kids. But if I can find use for them for myself, then I definitely will put them to use. And we have a carrying case, which obviously will have the telescope in it. And I like the carrying case. It's nice, looks sturdy. And we're gonna open this up to find our telescope. So this is it. I really like the design. It's a beautiful looking piece of machinery and I'm looking forward to using it. And I can picture myself taking this with me on a trip if I'm traveling by plane so I don't have to lug around my traditional astrophotography rig and I can actually carry this on to the plane. So portability, always a good thing in those situations. And we have a tabletop tripod. Now I'm gonna end up using a traditional tripod and I can see this being useful if you go on a camping trip, for example, where you can set up the telescope on the ground. And this is also useful for nights when it's gonna be a little breezy or windy because the telescope is so light that any moderate wind might be a cause for some vibration or some movement that will ruin your exposures. We also have what appears to be a USB-C cable that is angled, a right angle. I like these. They're more convenient in my opinion. And in here, it looks like we have a solar filter and it is magnetic from what I've read. So very good, very easy to remove and to put on and never, ever, ever point your telescope at the sun without proper filtering. So now that we have seen what's in the packaging, let's go ahead and talk about specs. The Seastar S30 features a Sony IMX662 camera sensor with a dual lens system, offering a maximum resolution of 1080 by 1920 on the telephoto lens and 1920 by 1080 on the wide angle. The telephoto lens has a 30 millimeter aperture, f5 focal ratio, and is an apochromatic triplet. It includes three built-in filters, a dark field filter for noise reduction, a UV IR cut filter to block infrared light interference, and a dual band filter for capturing hydrogen alpha and oxygen three wavelengths, useful for nebulae and reducing light pollution and moonlight. The S30 has 64 gigabytes of internal eMMC memory and supports Bluetooth, dual band Wi-Fi, and USB-C. It has a 10 meter Wi-Fi range and a five meter Bluetooth range. The 6,000 milliamp hour battery provides up to six hours of still image capture and four hours of video capture. The Seastar mobile app offers stargazing, scenery, and solar system shooting modes. It allows users to capture photos, videos, and time lapses, create mosaics for larger deep sky objects, and access a catalog of over 4,000 celestial objects searchable by text or with the sky atlas. These are just some of the features that the Seastar S30 is packed with. Now that I've talked about all the technical things, now comes the fun part. I'm gonna step outside and start setting up for the evening because it's gonna be a beautiful night for astrophotography. Okay, so I'm already connected to the Seastar S30 using my phone and I really like the layout of the app. It's very user friendly. It's very easy on the eyes. It just pops. So we're going to go into stargazing mode and it's galaxy season as of this video. So there's a lot of galaxies that are visible right now. I'm going to go for 
the pinwheel galaxy which is m101 here it is and it is almost directly at zenith right now so i'm gonna go to m101 and the sea star is now attempting to find it in the night sky all right so it has begun the live stack already so we're down to the first 10 seconds here and you'll see the pinwheel slowly start appearing on the screen you see the little blotch in the center of the screen there so let's see what it looks like after about a minute already starting to see it not too bad now I already had this turned on prior to recording so when you find a target for the first time it's gonna find it then it's gonna do a horizontal calibration so it'll take about one to two minutes before it actually starts live stacking but since I had already found it earlier in the evening it started right away so we're about 40 seconds in at this point 50 seconds now and after just one minute already starting to see some pretty decent details here the galaxy starting to come into view but it really was that easy to find a target with this app and this telescope and i really don't know what else to say it is straight to the point we hit the ground running so i'm gonna let this run for an hour and then I'm gonna show you the final result without any AI denoising, just one hour of live stacking. And I will show you the final stack here. And here it is. That was a great session for First Light. And for what this device is, I was very impressed with the image I was able to capture of the pinwheel galaxy. But now I want to put it to the test during the day, so I'm going to head back outside and do some solar imaging. I have the S30 already turned on. I'm already connected through the app. So at this point, I'm going to tap on open arm. And the arm is going to extend out. Once it's done, I'm going to do something very important that I mentioned earlier in the video and that is to attach my solar filter to the lens. And it should attach and clip right on because it is magnetic and it did clip on right away. So I have the telescope pointed in the general direction of where the sun is. It's pointing straight up right now. And one recommendation that I would like to make is that the best time to do solar imaging to avoid any heat waves from coming out in your images or in your video is to do it early in the morning, about an hour, maybe an hour and a half after sunrise. Anyway, I'm gonna tap on solar system and I'm gonna tap on the sun and I'm tap on go to. It's going to ask me to install the solar filter. I've already done that. So I'm going to tap on installed and start observing. And at this point, the telescope is going to try to find the sun. And it's already in the general direction. So I'm hoping that it finds it on the first try, because if it doesn't, it will typically ask you to try to find it manually with the lens. All right, looks like it did find it on the first try. So the sun should be popping up on the screen here. I'm gonna close the wide angle camera since we no longer need it. And I'm gonna, auto I'm gonna do auto focusing. That way we can get a good sharp focus on the solar surface here. Okay, so that looks good. Now, 
I'm gonna recenter the target. Doesn't look like it's exactly centered, and I got the sun, or uh, the sun itself is pointing straight down, so I need to get some shade here and get a good uh, view with my screen. All right, so that looks pretty good. I'm gonna run with this and I'm gonna tap on photo. And this is one way to get images of the sun. Another way to get images of the sun, which is preferred by solar imagers, is to shoot a video. So I'm gonna go to video mode. I'm gonna tap on raw because we want raw video. We don't want anything compressed. And typically, depending on the frame rate of your camera, if it's really quick, you only need maybe two or three seconds. But for the C star, I don't believe the camera is that quick. So I'm going to go for about 10 seconds of video. So I'm going to start it. And from here, we can stack the video frames. So I'm gonna try that now. I'm gonna close the session. I'm gonna go to my album. I'm gonna tap on C star. I'm gonna tap on the sun icon or the sun thumbnail that was there. Go back here real quick under the solar category. I'm gonna tap there. We're gonna tap on the video and then you're going to notice there is a stack option on the upper right hand corner. So I'm going to tap on that and hopefully I get a good result because if you haven't noticed based on the display earlier, it is a little breezy out here. So there's a little bit of camera shake going on. But typically this is how people who do solar imaging capture and produce their images. They shoot a few seconds of video. They use software to stack the best video frames from that video and then you get a stacked image as the final result. So the C star app has this built in, which is great. And let's find out and compare. So I'm going to show you the still photo that we took earlier and then I'm going to show you the stacked video or rather the stacked video frames that the app decided to use for the final image. So here it is. My final thoughts on the Seastar S30. In my opinion, I think it's a great device to get started in the hobby or if you're looking for portability. If my own kids ever wanted to get into it, now they have a great option to choose from here at home, so I'm glad I added it to my collection. I like the design and the build. It's pleasing to the eye. The portability is a big plus, and I finally get to relive my backyard astrophotography experience here at home with my traditional rig being at Starfront. The only minor issue that I had with the design itself was the not so common 3 8 of an inch threading size because all the tripods that I own have the more common quarter inch threading size. So I had to order a release plate with the correct threading size, but at the end of the day, it's not that big of a deal. Other than that, thank you for watching this video. If you found this video useful or you enjoyed it, please subscribe or follow me on social media. Until then, take care of yourselves and I wish for you clear skies.